It's 12 o'clock. And now, from TV8, where news is number one, Molly Cooney, John McLaughlin, and Mary Brubaker. This is TV8 News, live at noon. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. The months of handshakes, campaign speeches, promises, and pledges come to an end today as voters in Iowa and across the country have the final say on who will be in office tomorrow. But one thing candidates and voters alike can agree on in Iowa, Mother Nature perhaps has cast the most surprising vote of all today. We knew it had to happen sooner or later, but snow is falling over much of the state today, and it could be a factor in voter, voter turnout where the snowfall is heavy. Here in central Iowa, the flakes started falling about mid-morning. To the west of us in west central Iowa, up to five inches of snow is reported on the ground already. And it has meant delays in voting for many, including Governor Branstad, who was driving from Des Moines to Lake Mills. And more snow is expected through tonight, so what's the latest for the forecast, John? Okay, if we can go to radar, we can show you lots of snow across central Iowa right now. Fairly wide band extending from around the Waterloo area all the way back to Creston. The snow really doesn't seem to be moving much. It's actually moving to the east, but it's being replaced with more snow coming out of Nebraska, even though we can't see that on a radar right now. Up to uh, five inches of snow just to the south of the Sioux City area. Also around Denison, four inches of snow. Boone reporting about two inches. Here at the Des Moines Airport, officially now three quarters of an inch of snow. A snow advisory is in effect for much of the northwestern two-thirds of Iowa today. Anywhere from two to four inches of additional snow could fall. Roads are becoming slippery as the snow starts to melt on them, so if you're traveling, use some caution and go slow today. All right, thanks, John. Well, the Iowa Secretary of State's office is predicting Iowa could have one of the better voter turnouts in the country. TV8's Michelle Parker is standing by live at the Polk County Election Headquarters to tell us more on that. Michelle? Well, Molly, the weather so far, election officials say, is somewhat of an unknown factor. It's hard to predict what kind of impact it will have on voter turnout. Here in Des Moines and in Polk County, uh, polling places are are showing a heavier than normal voter turnout. There have been predictions by a national nonpartisan group that the voter turnout around the country will be the lowest in 40 years. But the Secretary of State's office thinks Iowa will do much better than that. One reason is voter registrations. As of November 1st, nearly 45,000 people had registered in a 30-day period. That's an increase of 100% over the same period in 1986 and more than 30% increase over 1982, both non-presidential years. And another reason is the high number of requests for absentee ballots. With me right now is Tom Parkins, Polk County Auditor. Can you tell me, first of all, what your predictions are for Polk County voter turnout? Well, I think it'll be 60% plus. That would be more than 86. It wouldn't be quite as many as 82, but I think there's going to be a strong turnout. I'd like to see a record, bro. Well, how do you see the weather impacting this turnout? Well, it's really unknown. Uh, extreme weather conditions obviously are going to keep people away from the polls, uh, but unless the streets get slippery, uh, I generally think people will, uh, will get out and vote. What are you hearing from polling places? Well, several have reported uh, very strong voter turnout, and, and uh, it doesn't seem to be uh, geographically uh, uh, based. I, I think uh, it, that's happening throughout the county. There's one question that might cause some confusion for voters on the Constitutional Convention. Can you talk about that real briefly? Yes, uh, the question is initially summarized uh, on the ballot, and, and I would recommend that uh, voters ignore that uh, first question and just look directly at the second question. That's the actual uh, language that uh, they should refer to. And what does that state, the question? It, it gives voters the option of holding a, uh, a state Constitutional Convention. Uh, that's on the ballot every 10 years. Okay, thank you very much. And Molly and John will have more information on voter turnout tonight at 6. Okay, Michelle Parker, thank you. Reporting live. John. And as we said earlier, the weather has delayed Governor Branstad from arriving in Lake Mills this morning to cast his vote. He was supposed to be there about 10.30, but of course, the weather's slowing him down. His opponent, Don Avenson, voted this morning in Old Wine before heading on to Des Moines to watch the returns later on this evening. We plan on having more on Governor Branstad's trip to Lake Mills a little bit later on in the news. Incumbent Democratic Senator Tom Harkin cast his ballot this morning. He voted at the Parish Hall in Cumming, just south of Des Moines, while his opponent, Tom Taki, voted at Loris College in Dubuque. Harkin, in the most recent TV8 News poll, was leading Taki 46% to 39%. Harkin said today he feels good about the campaign and the outcome. I think uh, 
that we ran one of the best campaigns in the country. In fact, uh, there was an article written in one of the national magazines here not too long ago saying that the Harkin campaign in Iowa was sort of a classic model on how to run a long-term campaign when uh, you've got the best up against you. And quite frankly, they've thrown the best at me, and they've thrown a lot at me. And uh, I think our campaign may serve as a model uh, of efficiency and they really had to get the job done. Both Harkin and Taki will be in Des Moines tonight as the returns come in and TV8 will have live coverage from all the campaigns beginning at 6 o'clock tonight. In addition to races for U.S. Senate and Governor, Iowa will be, Iowans will be voting on their congressional representatives. There are contests in three of the six Iowa congressional districts. Iowans will also be voting on candidates for statewide offices and the legislature. Democrats control both chambers there, and very little change is expected. And President Bush got lots of attention as he voted this morning in Houston, Texas. Now the president is waiting to see how GOP candidates do in his home state there. Mr. Bush campaigned for Republican gubernatorial candidate Clayton Williams yesterday. The president returned to Washington after voting in Houston. He'll be monitoring election results from the White House tonight. And still to come, more hostages may be released from Iraq. And the Des Moines City Council takes final action on Art in the Park and Northwest Pool. We'll have those stories coming up. Stay with us. The latest word from Iraq is that 106 more foreign hostages are being sent home, including some used as human shields. The Iraqi news agency says 77 of them are Japanese, being freed after a visit of a former Japanese official. None of the freed are expected to be Americans. Secretary of State James Baker met with Egypt's President Hosni Mubarak in Cairo today. Baker went looking for assurances on Egypt's commitment to the multinational array of forces against Iraq's Saddam Hussein. There's no word on how things went. A joint news conference was canceled when Mubarak said he had another appointment and Baker decided not to face reporters alone. Baker has been in the Middle East on a seven-country tour testing support for military action against Iraq. The radical rabbi who called for driving all Arabs out of Israel was killed last night in New York City. Meir Kahana was the victim of an assassin, an act that many had predicted. The 58-year-old New York-born militant rabbi was shot at a Midtown New York hotel by a man who approached him after the rabbi had finished making a speech. The gunman was then shot in the neck by a postal police officer on duty across the street. The rabbi first gained notoriety in the late 60s when he founded the De Jewish Defense League. He later immigrated to Israel, where he became a citizen there in 1971. Israeli police are fanning out to prevent violence in the wake of the rabbi's murder. The deadly retribution may already have begun. Two Palestinians in the West Bank were reported shot dead today. An Israeli radio reporter quotes Kohani's supporters as saying the two were killed to avenge his death and warning that there could be more attacks on Arabs. After months of debate, the Des Moines City Council has given final approval for the Des Moines Arts Center to place sculpture art in Greenwood Park. The council last night approved a special 49-year agreement to place eight works of art on 27 acres of the park. The agreement gives the city the final say on the location of any art, but the Arts Center has final control of the art itself. Opponents say the city is giving up too many valuable rights. In other action, the council agreed to a new $1.7 million municipal swimming pool on the original site at Northwest Pool at 50th and Madison instead of re relocating it to Tower Park on Hickman. And the council voted to submit three airport noise reduction plans to the Federal Aviation Administration to appease more than 800 homeowners in the south part of Des Moines. Plans would involve selling homes for fair market value, paying a portion of the soundproofing cost, or sell an easement to the airport. The Agony City Council last night refused to back down from its support of a planned airport in northeastern Polk County. Opponents jammed the Ankeny City Council chambers and presented the council with more than 2,200 signatures on petitions against the site. The group also recommended the council reconsider relocating the proposed airport two miles to the east. The proposed facility would be built on 400 acres of land southeast of Ankeny. Residents are concerned about its environmental effects and safety hazards the airport might pose. Opponents say the petitions aren't against an airport, just against the current site. Still, the council would not back down. The petition very simply urges the council to take steps uh, that they're entitled to take under the Code of Iowa to withdraw from that alliance between Bondurant, Altoona, Polk County, and the city of Ankeny. This council believes that this project is right for the majority of citizens in this community and in northern Polk County. 
Opponents also had believed the airport site would be in a protected wetland, but an Army Corps of Engineers study shows only a small portion of the site was wetland, not enough to stop the project. Turning now to weather, what a surprise. A week ago it was, what, 70 degrees, 75? That's right. We were skiing a week ago, <laughs> water skiing. <laughs> now we can turn over to snow, snow skiing. skiing. It looks like we may get up to around three inches in the Des Moines area. We'll tell you how long it will last after this. For up-to-the-minute weather information, day or night, call the TV8 Weather Beacon forecast at 262-7173. Snow continuing to fall in the Des Moines area. This is a look at the uh, bell tower on Zion Lutheran, one of the voting sites. Temperature has been falling all morning now. We're down to 32 degrees. So that means some of that snow will start sticking on the roadways. Northeast wind 10 miles per hour, 100% humidity, visibility with the snow down to a half mile right now, and the barometer rising at 3017 as an upper air disturbance is moving away from it. Let's go down to National Weather Service radar, a large area of snow continuing in central Iowa. Now one of the things about snow is that the radar doesn't pick it up very well, and as it gets farther out here, it's not able to detect the snow, but snow is falling all the way to the western Iowa border on into central Nebraska, where a winter storm warning is in effect right now, so it does appear we'll have snow moving through the area for at least the next several hours. This area of snow is moving east at 20, so it'll be spreading into eastern Iowa before too much longer. Temperatures around the area right now have dropped off into the 30s from, uh, from the Des Moines area on to the north, 31 in Fort Dodge, 33 Mason City, Spencer reporting 33 as well, some very heavy snow across western Iowa. Little Sioux, which is in here, picking up about five inches. The Denison area, which would be about right in this area, has picked up four inches so far. Boone reporting about two inches of snow on the ground and more than an inch of, in Ames at the Des Moines Airport, now about seven-tenths of an inch. Since this morning, temperatures have not really gone anywhere, hovering in the upper 20s across the north and overnight lows across the south in the mid-30s. On the satellite picture this morning, here is the storm system right here developing over Iowa practically right on top of us. Lots of moisture left over from the weekend rains in the area. So uh, potential for some heavy snow, especially as we get a little bit farther back to the west into Nebraska. Winter storm warnings in effect. Uh, snow advisory in effect for the eastern part of Nebraska. So you have travel plans out past the Omaha or Lincoln area. Might want to reconsider traveling today. The rest of the country looking pretty good with dry weather across the southern U.S. Temperatures though cooling down. The cool air that moved through here on the weekend is continuing to push south. Temperatures right now in the 50s, which is a bit cool for this time of year. Snow advisory in effect for this entire shaded area of the state today. One to three inches here in central Iowa, on up into the northeast. Two to four additional inches possible in the northwest. And again, some places have already had three to five inches. Temperatures today pretty much steady from where they're at right now. Later on tonight, the snow will be moving off into eastern Iowa. About one inch accumulation. Flurries for the rest of us. Then some partial clearing late tonight. Temperatures very cool. Teens north to around 20. 22 to 24 in the south and tomorrow looks good but very cool. The snow will be ending sunshine. Temperatures in the 30s to around 40. Now for Des Moines and Central Iowa. Here's your detailed forecast. The snow advisory will continue in effect this afternoon. A total accumulation of around 1 to 3 inches. We're pretty close to 1 inch right now. 35 to 38 degrees north, north wind at 10 to 15. Later on tonight, mostly cloudy. Some light snow or flurries but little additional accumulation. A low in the lower 20s. And then for tomorrow, Mostly sunny and cold, a high temperature of 37 to 39. The weekend looking a little bit better, warming into the 40s and 50s. And, of course, today will be the first snow contest day. About 712 people picked today as the first measurable snowfall in Des Moines. Connie will have more on that later on tonight. Okay, as far as the drawings, congratulations. And for those of us who have not yet raked our leaves, all of them, <laughs> thanks a lot, John. Turning now to stocks, the market is lower in moderate trading today. Volume the first two and a half hours, 68 million shares. The Dow is down one point today at 2,500. Average share of common stock is down one penny. Midwest cattle prices this noon, weak to 50 lower. Butchers mostly 50 to a dollar lower. Sows today are steady. In Chicago, December corn is lower at 230. November beans mixed at 578. December wheat is higher today at 265. And time now to check in with Mary, who's got something about uh, addiction, addiction, I believe. Right. Ann Wilson Shafe has traveled all over the world to lecture and speak on the uh, subject of addiction and mental health. I'll introduce you to her when we come back. Stay tuned. 
Ann Wilson Schaaf is down-to-earth, strong-minded, sometimes controversial, and painfully honest. This mental health expert spoke to a large crowd of health care professionals and people in recovery last week here in Des Moines and told them that even our society operates like an addict. I asked her about the trend toward openness and public disclosure by addicts. In some ways, I think it's been very helpful. You know, when people like Betty Ford, I mean, I really think there was a, a shift when movie stars and public people started saying they were addicts and that they were going for treatment and, and that that was possible. I think that made a, a great deal of difference because I think still in the minds of many people, um, addicts are people who are street drunks. Ann Wilson Schaaf is an organizational consultant, lecturer, and workshop leader consulting with business schools and mental health and treatment centers and trains health care professionals in living process facilitation, a method she personally developed. An internationally recognized authority on addiction, she talks openly about her own relationship addiction and has created some controversy by claiming that about 90% of the population is addicted to something and could benefit from the traditional 12-step program used by AA because I was one of the strongest critics of the 12-step program before I started my own recovery. I, I stood outside the 12-step program as a scientist and analyzed and objectively saw everything that was wrong with it, you know, and finally I was, I was impressed by the way it worked. Mm -hmm. You know, I saw people who seemed to me to be relatively crazy and they'd go to a meeting and they'd come back and they were better, you know, and I got curious. That's what happened to me. I thought, what is this? And I started going to meetings with my notepad. I mean, as a scientist, I was going to observe what happened and I was going to figure out what worked there and then apply it to my practice. But what happened is I saw that it worked. I, and so then I decided that I couldn't be as critical as I was. I had to look at the level of my criticism, what is that threatening in me? You know, why am I so frightened by this program? And of course what it was doing is protecting my supply, as we say in the circles, you know, that when I criticize out there, it's there's something that's threatening my supply. So I started going to meetings and I started working the program. And what I discovered is that I had a shift in perception and I began to see the world differently. And what I see is that one of the important things to me about the 12-step meetings is that everybody there is equal. And you're equal in that you're all addicts. And it doesn't matter whether you're a CEO of a major corporation or a street drunk. And very often the CEO can learn a lot from the street drunk, you know. And there's something about that equality that is so important and so powerful. And I discovered in myself that um, when I go to places where nobody knows who I am, you know, and I have all these books out and how important I am in the field, uh, I find myself wanting to let them know in some little way with what I'll say, you know. And I can see why it's important not to do that, that I go there just being me. And there are very few places that that happens. You know, it's not that, it's not that everybody is chemically addicted in the society. But when you see that the way that we were trained to do relationships is addictive relationships, when you see that the way that we're trained to work is workaholism, um, I don't know whether you remember or not, but back in the 50s and early 60s, one of the concerns was what we were going to do with leisure time. You know, that, that because of mechanization, automation, all this, that people would not be working as much. And so there was a big concern about leisure time and leisure time activities and et cetera, et cetera. And of course what is happening is we're working longer hours now than when we were in the 50s. One last question. How can we as <clears throat> parents help our children avoid addiction? Well, I think that's a very easy question. Do our own recovery. That um, uh, when we are trying to do something for our children, we're probably not doing it right. As we do our own recovery work and face up our own addictions and we begin to change, we are models for our children. And um, I've seen this happen time and time again, that people have been concerned about their children using drugs or alcohol and wanted to control that. And as they do their own work, that shifts the system. 
and children see that there's another way to be. Um, I, I consult with a couple of adolescent treatment programs in various parts of the country, and uh, what almost always happens is the kid comes in because of their drug use and because of their disruptive behavior, and then the parents have to start recovery in order for to be supportive of that kid's recovery, and then they discover their myriad of addictions. Shade has some very interesting things to say about workaholism, and we'll share that with our viewers on another day. Okay. But we'll be right back with more after this. As we told you earlier, light snow and cloudy skies greeted Governor Terry Branstad this morning in his hometown of Lake Mills. The governor, like many others this morning, had to stand in line after checking in at the polling place. They still use paper ballots in Lake Mills, which is just a few miles south of the Minnesota border. The governor probably didn't need to do much campaigning in his hometown. He did say he's glad the long and sometimes bitter campaign is finally over. I think the negative uh, commercials have turned a lot of people off. So I think people are ready to have it over with. And I think they're relieved that there's no uh, uh, political commercials on today. And uh, so I think it's good. I mean, this is part of our, our political system. But, but I think uh, uh, it was almost overdone this time in terms of all of the uh, TV commercials. I'm sure the television stations didn't mind the revenue, but, but it, I think it got a little out of hand. And, and right about now, the governor is finishing up lunch with family and friends at the local Dairy Queen in Lake Mills. He will be returning to watch the election returns tonight at Terrace Hill. Probably had a blizzard. Now it's time for another TV8 salute to a helping hand volunteer in our community. <laughs> Smiling faces are helping hand volunteers from Dallas County. They represent all walks of life, including members of public office, board members for nonprofit organizations, and folks who just plain like to volunteer. TV8 and the United Way of Central Iowa are proud to salute these Dallas County folks as helping hand volunteers. A blueberry blizzard or what? <laughs> Chocolate Oreo. I something, okay. Mary. You're making us hungry. I know, no kidding. But something on the lighter side tomorrow, the Des Moines Airs are having their fall concert coming up this Saturday at Hoyt Sherman. We'll hear one of the barbershop quartets from the group called Old News. I was going to say, you can't fit all of those into the studio. <laughs> no way. <laughs> kind of crowded. Okay, John, for okay. the weather. Yeah, the snow's still falling in central Iowa. Snow advisory in effect on, well, one to three inches accumulation today, a high temperature not going much from where we're at right now. Then later on tonight, the snow should be tapering off. We'll look for a few flurries, but little additional accumulation. A low temperature of 21 to 23 degrees, and then for tomorrow, skies will be mostly sunny, but remaining on the cold side. High temperature, 37 to 39. Here's a look at that radar picture. Snow continuing to sit right over top of central Iowa. So far in the Des Moines area, we picked up about three quarters of an inch of snow, but more snow off to the west and northwest in some cases four to five inches and additional snowfall of one to three inches is expected in snow advisory in effect. So if you're traveling today, use some caution. And a reminder to keep uh, watching TV8, not only for all the weather advisories, but for complete election coverage beginning at six o'clock tonight with Kevin Cooney and Paul Rhodes. And we'll be with you all through the night with election results. So we'll see you later today. All right, then join us at noon tomorrow. Bye-bye.